All right, so let's summarize what we just did. Um, we used titration, right, as a method of determining the concentration of an acid or a base. So if you go back to these calculations, in each case, what I was doing, let me put my hover cam on, what I was doing is calculating the hydrogen ion concentration or the pH, the OH concentration or the pH um, at each step along again here, the hydrogen ion concentration or the pH. We are determining using a known acid or base concentration what the concentration or the pH of the unknown is. That's the purpose of the whole thing. Now, let's summarize what we saw. Um, here's an example I wanted to show you of um, endpoints. These endpoints are determined uh, with a color. So when you do your simulation, you got to see that I'm going to add this either to a colored solution or a colorless solution, wait for the transition, and that will tell me when I get to this endpoint. Um, basically, we're going to add squirrel, add swirl until the color changes. The endpoint is going to be where that color change is really, really small, very faint. This is a little bit too far, and I can determine how, what volume of a known um, titrant I added to the flask to determine what the concentration is in a flask. Now, again, what we did is we started off around one, didn't we, right? We titrated and then um, got to about, in our case, it was about 49 milliliters. And then when we got to 50, we were at a neutral pH and then it leveled off. So this is a real, very um, distinct S-shaped curve. And that shape of that curve is something you need to identify as being the, the curve of a strong acid with a strong base. They're very characteristic. Um, and then I can get this equivalence point right at seven for strong acids and strong bases. The equivalence is always seven. That is not true with weaks and strongs, but with strong and strong, it is at seven. That is characteristic of the pH of the equivalence point, and you need to be able to identify that on a curve. Now, I also put in here another way for you to uh, solve these using ice tables or rice tables. Um, I'm going to let you look at this on your own. I did that totally stoichiometrically because with strongs, it's just moles. I have this many moles of this and this many moles of that. How much of that am I going to make? Um, so I find that the easier way to do it. But some people may like to, to look at the rice tables and you can do that um, for these all three examples. Um, I've got a rice table here. Um, for you to look at if you would like to do that. All right, so let's summarize. Um, a strong acid and a strong base titration, the initial pH of the strong acid is very low. As you're adding it initially, the pH increases slowly because again, we're adding uh, hydroxide. And then rapidly, as we get near the equivalence point, that's why these are hard to do properly. Um, they're hard to do properly. They take a little bit of experience. Equivalence point of the pH uh, at the equivalence point is always 7 uh, because it's neutral. And we can see that, right? Because if you just look at the equation, all I'm making is salt and water. And that is pH of 7. And then, of course, the equivalence point afterward is high. Why? Because I'm adding more and more hydroxide, I'm adding more of this, I'm done with this, so now I'm just measuring the pH of more hydroxide in a neutral solution. All right, the next is a, is a little bit more complicated. Um, and so it's probably going to take me a couple videos to get through this because I'm going to do it fairly slowly. Weaks and, str and, and, and strongs act totally differently. And here's why. When I react a strong with a strong, I get to here and I'm done. The sodium chloride, remember we learned in our last unit about how salts can act as acids, bases, or neutral. With strongs, the salt that I create is always neutral. Water's neutral, I'm done. 
with weaks and strongs, um, or weak acids and strongs, or weak bases and strong acid titrations, sometimes I make a salt that can either be basic or acidic in and of itself. And that's going to add a little bit of complexity. I get here, and then there's one more step involved. It's going to change the way the curve looks, and it's going to change it, uh, how the calculations go. So let's do a real common one. We're going to take acetic acid, and we are going to titrate it with um, sodium hydroxide. So this is going to be a weak acid and a strong base. And here's the Ka for mine. So this is weak. And um, so what that means is the pH of this is probably going to be greater than 1 because a 0.1 molar solution of HCl had a pH of 1. But we know that for a week it's not going to be that high. Well, what's it going to be? Now I'm going to kind of go through this really quick now, these rice tables. I basically want to know what the pH, the initial pH of my acetic acid solution is before I start to titrate it. We know that if I set up my rice table, I would get this, but that basically because I have a very uh, small Ka, I can do this, and that gives me a pH of 2.89 because X is equal to 0 0.0013 and once I get that I can take the negative log of that and I'm going to get a pH and so it is true a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid has a higher pH because it's a weaker acid than hydrochloric acid okay so that's what I'm going to start with now I'm going to add some sodium hydroxide so the initial moles of this that I have is calculated the same way I've got 50 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution. So we want to go to moles again. We're still going to work through moles because that's it's an acid-base reaction. We're going to work through moles. And I'm going to put that acid-base reaction, actually, let's put that down here. Um, this is basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave sodium off there. I could have put it on there, but it's a spectator. So let's just leave it off this time, right? The salt plus water. That's what we're doing here. So this is a stoichiometry, stoichiometry because even though this is a weak acid, this hydroxide is going to push it to completion. I'm basically going to force it to react. I'm going to go all the way until all of this uh, goes to um, its anion, right? So that means I have 0050 moles of this. And for, hyd for hydroxide, this time I'm not adding 49 milliliters. I'm adding... 25 milliliters, so that gives me 0, 0, 0.025 mole of sodium hydroxide. Now, when I look at this, basically what I have done, and let's do this in a separate color, I have taken 0 0.0025 mole of this and reacted it with 0, 0, 0.0050 oh mole of that. What that's going to mean is this is a one-to-one, -one, so how much of this am I going to get? Well, I'm going to lose some of this, right? And it's going to react. So the amount of this present in the solution is going to be the difference. Right? So I've got 0 0.0025 mole left. And this went on to do what? To generate... 0 0.0025 mole of my anion. Okay. Now, what does that mean? It turns out that this is a special thing that happens with weeks. When I get to where the ratio between the amount of weak acid I have left over and the amount of acid of anion that I have is 1 to 1, that is called the halfway point in a titration. I am halfway, right, to reacting the full 0.005 um, moles of it. When that happens, we're going to jump a little bit ahead. We're going to use 
the Henderson Hasselbach equation. This is in your formula chart. It says that the pH is equal to the pKa plus log of the ratio of the anion to the uh, original acid. Well, if this is 0 0.0025 and this is 0 0.0025, this is 1. When this is 1, that is 0. So when these two are equal, my pH is equal to my pKa. This is only true with weaks. This is not true with strongs. But with weaks, this is the case. So that can simplify my equation considerably. And I can use that to calculate the pH of my solution. Okay. All right. Now let's move on. So now we're going to add 50 milliliters of point, uh, uh, 1 molar sodium hydroxide. That means that I have added equal quantities in moles and I basically don't have any of this left, do I? I've gone all the way, if I've added sodium hydroxide, I've pushed the reaction all the way to the right. I don't have any of that. Now it's all anion. The total volume of my solution is 100 milliliters. And so if I take this divided by this, that gives me 0 0.050 molar of this. So again, I've taken hydroxide and I've created the anion. And now I've gone all the way to this side, all of the moles that I had originally of this have now all converted to this and that is the concentration and then you just divide that by your volume and I get the molarity of my of my anion. Now to find the pH here though this is my equivalence point. What's interesting about this is what we're going to find is that at the equivalence point for a week we are not at seven because sodium acetate behaves as a base. So now it's going to go on, react with water to generate hydroxide and acetic acid. And so when this happens, this little bit of chemistry that happens here, this is going to cause the pH of our solution to go up higher than 7 because this is now going to react and it's going to create that base. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find out, okay, KB is KW over KA, so I want to know what my KB is because now if I want to know what my new pH is, I'm going to use a rice table to do it. 0.6 times 10 to the minus 10, that's my KB. So what that allows me to do now is I am going to and I'm hurrying so I can get through in the time we have. This is now the acetate reaction, right, generating hydroxide, is equal to X squared over O50, which is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. X is equal to the OH concentration, which is 5.3 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. POH is equal to 5.28 pH is equal to 5.72 so um, sorry 8.72 so notice that just like we set up here at the equivalence point for a weak acid strong base titration the equivalence point is not at 7 right the equivalence point is not at 7, and my pH is a little higher. So I'm going to stop here, and we're going to continue this problem in the next video.